Hi, it's Katrina. From an unknown artifact at a museum to megalithic stones buried underground, here are nine mysterious archaeological discoveries that scientists can't explain. Number 9. Unknown Man E Near the end of the 19th century, Egyptian Antiquities Service head Gaston Maspero found the remains of a young man in a plain coffin bearing no clues as to his identity. Gaston was unwrapping mummies that were found at Deir el Bari near the Valley of the Kings. The deceased was wrapped in sheepskin, which was not a great sign as it was a material the ancient Egyptians considered unclean, and his hands and feet were bound. But the strangest thing of all was that he appeared to be screaming, and strangely enough, the man was not traditionally mummified, as evidenced by the lack of an incision on his left abdomen indicating the removal of internal organs. Gaston and other experts at the time concluded that he was poisoned to death, asphyxiated, or met some other sort of foul play. This was very clearly a dishonorable death. Unsure of his identity, they nicknamed him Unknown Man E, and the mystery of who he was has persisted into modern times. One theory is that Unknown Man E is a Hittite prince, who according to the royal archives was murdered near the Egyptian border after being sent there to marry Tutankhamun's widow. As a foreigner, he would not have been afforded the typical mummification and burial that was extended to members of Egyptian society. Another hypothesis suggests that Unknown Man E was a high-ranking person who died in an area that lacked mummification knowledge or technology, perhaps during a military campaign. Maybe the area's culture did not view sheepskin in the same negative context that the Egyptians did, and their priests preserved the man to the best of their abilities with the materials available to them. A third theory proposes that the mummy is Ramses III's son, Prince Pentewere, who participated in a conspiracy against his father and was among the conspirators who were caught and executed. Modern experts are unfortunately no closer than they were a century ago to identifying the individual. Bob Breyer, a researcher and contributing editor to archaeology, had the opportunity to examine Unknown Man E in 2006. He detailed his findings in a report, stating that he cannot state with certainty who the mummy is, that out of all of the suggested identities, that it best matches the description of the treacherous prince. Number 8. The Unknown Artifact Someone donated this strange-looking object to the Michigan Historical Museum around 1913, in the early days of the museum. But the curious thing is that nobody knows what it is. Is it part of a boat? A piece of equipment? Some kind of weaponry? The museum has posted a video describing it, asking anyone who can identify it to let them know. Crafted from wood, the one-foot-long item has a handle on one end, it is slightly pointed on the other end, and measures approximately 6 inches wide by 6 inches tall. The round circular things are not objects inside, but circular wood pieces that were nailed onto the outside. There are no openings on the artifact indicating that it was not made to put anything inside, as far as we know. It appears as though nobody made or kept any proper records documenting the object, which could partially explain why modern researchers have failed to determine what it is. Back in the day, when the object was donated, maybe everyone already thought it was obvious. Little is known about its origins other than the item came from the Fayette Historic Town Site, a mining ghost town located on Michigan's Upper Peninsula that manufactured charcoal pig iron between 1867 and 1891. It's one of several objects that make up a collection of unidentified artifacts at the Michigan Historical Museum in Lansing. What do you think it could be? Let me know in the comments below! Number 7. Neolithic Stone Balls Throughout Scotland and in some other parts of Europe, hundreds of carved stone balls dating as far back as 5,000 years have been popping up all over the place. Their appearances vary, with some bearing intricate patterns and others featuring carved knobs, pyramids, and other designs most are around the same size, measuring about 2.75 inches in diameter. Experts are at a loss to explain the purpose of these Neolithic artifacts, but are still determined to figure it out. The National Museum of Scotland recently announced that new efforts are underway to get to the bottom of the mystery by searching through hundreds of documents relating to discoveries of the stone balls, using virtual technology, and searching for missing and undiscovered artifacts. Unfortunately, while researchers know that many of the balls were found in Aberdeenshire, for example, they don't know the exact locations, which would help when it comes to learning more about them. Additionally, some people who found the artifacts in the past likely underestimated their historical value and just did all kinds of stuff with them, leading experts to believe that there are some stone balls out there that have long been overlooked by their owners. 
We are on the trail, Dr. Hugo Anderson Weimark, who is heading the research, told The Herald. We are working on trying to track down a couple that are known to exist. One was last seen in 1896 and the other in 1908. And there are probably a few that were found and taken away because people didn't know what they were. He added that Scottish law requires people to report archaeological finds. So if you have a decorated stone ball in your yard or something, you know what to do. The most recent discovery of a stone ball was found among a collection of flint tools in 2018. Anderson Weimark and his team hope that more will surface as their investigation unfolds. And now for a super recent discovery, but first it's shout out time! Want to say a big thank you to Bree Bree Hayes and Kenny M. Thanks for being here with us! If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and join the Origins Explain family. We'd love to have you! Number 6. San Qingdui Gold Mask Archaeologists have just uncovered a gold mask dating back 3,000 years. It was just one of 500 treasures and artifacts found in a recent cache of finds from the ancient San Qingdui. Uncovered in a collection of six newly discovered sacrificial pits, it weighs roughly 0.6 pounds and is estimated to contain 84% gold. In recent decades, archaeologists in southwestern China's Sichuan province have excavated troves of artifacts belonging to the enigmatic Bronze Age culture. A local farmer accidentally discovered the first known artifacts during the 1920s, but proper excavations did not begin until 1986. Altogether, over 50,000 artifacts have been recovered. Located throughout a 4.6 square mile area in the modern day city of Guanghan, the site tells of a wealthy and powerful civilization that thrived in the 12th and 11th centuries BC. Other discoveries include objects made from ivory, bone, gold, and jade, as well as a bronze vessel featuring an owl pattern and a wooden box that has yet to be opened. Silk fibers found at the site indicate that the culture was one of ancient China's important silk manufacturers, according to excavation leader Tang Fei. These and the other items have been connected with the ancient Shu kingdom that ruled in the western Sichuan basin until it was conquered in 316 BC. Researchers believe that the items were ritually deposited, burned, and buried, but they admittedly know very little about the Sanxing Dui or the Shu state, of which few written records exist. It's evident that the Shu culture was unique among surrounding societies, suggesting that it developed independently, making the mystery of who the Sanxing Dui were all the more intriguing. Number 5. Medici Mystery Born as Lodovico de' Medici in 1498, Giovanni dalle Bande Nere was a Medici warrior who earned a fierce reputation at a young age when he was reportedly exiled from Florence at the age of 12 for murdering someone. His violent spirit made him an excellent mercenary and military captain during the 16th century. He became a legend. Can you imagine your 12-year-old self as a soldier? He became known as Giovanni of the Black Bands because he wore these bands after the death of Pope Leo X. Contemporary reports claim that Giovanni died at 28 after being struck by a cannonball. It hit his right leg above the knee and then reports claim that the amputation was carried out above the ankle, not above the wound. This wouldn't make any sense. The mystery of what happened to him persisted, and in 2013, the famous warrior was exhumed from his burial at the Medici chapels in Florence, along with his wife. Fun fact, they only had one child, Cosimo I, who reigned as the first Grand Duke of Tuscany and created the Uffizi. Anywho, everyone wanted to know what really happened to Giovanni of the Black Bands to know if the surgeon had made a mistake. His bones demonstrate that he was a strong man, about 5 foot 8 inches tall. They showed evidence of having carried extremely heavy armor and that he was often mounted on a horse. The remains included an intact femur with only the lower leg and foot removed, and seem to tell a different story than what's on record. University of Pisa paleopathologist Gino Fornacciari, who led the team investigating the matter, said that the surgeon was accused of killing him, but that wasn't the case. The cannonball had partially amputated his leg, and the remains show that the surgeon did a good job and cleaned out the wound and smoothed the stump. It took at least 10 men to hold Giovanni down during the surgery, but despite everyone's efforts, he died five days later. Fornacciari says that with further study, we hope to clarify how Giovanni was wounded and the type of surgical intervention that took place, as well as reconstruct more details about the lives of the Medicis. Number 4. The Denisovans Experts are fascinated with a mysterious group of early humans that left their DNA in different groups of modern humans that are around today. But who were they? The extinct human species known as the Denisovans was first identified in 2010, 
based on mitochondrial DNA from an ancient finger bone. Found in Denisova Cave in Siberia's Altai Mountains, genetic information suggests that these archaic people had dark features and a Neanderthal-like build and facial characteristics. Traces of Denisovan DNA found in modern-day Melanesians, Aboriginal Australians, and Papuans show the Denisovans interbred with early members of our own species, Homo sapiens, before going extinct around 50,000 years ago. Scientists recently determined that they procreated extensively with early humans in the islands of Southeast Asia. We don't really know why they disappeared. But experts' knowledge of the Denisovans is almost entirely limited to what they've learned from DNA, as their fossil record is scarce at best. The only known evidence of their existence consists of a handful of bones found at two sites, leading researchers to wonder why they haven't found more Denisovan artifacts, especially in places where a high percentage of their DNA was found in modern populations. Curiously, scientists have noticed that the megafaunal extinction patterns of some of these areas reflect signs of a pre-modern human presence. In other words, it appears as though someone hunted there long before the people who live there today arrived, even those whose presence goes back tens of thousands of years. Maybe it was the Denisovans. Now researchers are on the lookout for more discoveries related to them, or they have to re-evaluate the current fossil record of islands in Southeast Asia. In the words of lead author of the study and ARC research associate from the University of Adelaide, Dr. Joao Teixeira, whichever way you choose to look at it, Exciting times lie ahead in paleoanthropology. Number 3. Moccasins Located in the northern shore of Great Salt Lake in Utah, the promontory caves were discovered in the 1930s by archaeologist Julian Stewart. They contained rare organic material and artifacts left behind by the people who lived there around 800 years ago, including subarctic-style moccasins, begging the question of why and how the out-of-place footwear ended up at the site. The moccasins were unlike those used by nearby groups, but closely resembled those worn by the Dene people who live much further north, indicating that they were Dene ancestors, Lakehead University professor and geochemical archaeologist Dr. Jessica Metcalf said. Using modern technology, researchers examined chemical traces in the shoes to reconstruct the movement of the people who wore them. An isotope analysis of an ankle strap, a part of the moccasin that was often reused, revealed that the people who lived in the promontory caves not only had subarctic Dene roots, but that they also traveled much further south of the Great Salt Lake at some point before their belongings ended up at the site, perhaps into the American Southwest where Dene-speaking people live today. Did you know that you could get that much information out of an old moccasin and an ankle strap? Me neither. It appears as though Dene connections date back much longer than scientists originally thought, with long-distance migration starting many centuries ago. Number 2. Buried Ancient Sculptures During road construction in 2019, archaeologists from France's National Institute of Preventive Archaeology Research discovered the first known megalithic site in the country's central region, consisting of 30 menhirs, or monoliths. The huge stones are arranged from smallest to largest in a 500-foot line, a line facing from north to south. Most of the menhirs are made from locally sourced basalt and are plain in nature, although one limestone megalith was carved in the shape of a person, with small breasts and a chevron that might be forearms. At some point, someone deliberately buried the ancient sculptures, along with an adjacent four-sided stone cairn that was also found at the site. Measuring 46 feet by 21 feet, the cairn surrounds the burial of a tall man. Evidence shows that people used the site for thousands of years, from the Neolithic period through the Bronze Age, but researchers do not know why someone purposely obscured the monuments from the landscape by burying them. One possibility, according to Inrap archaeologist Ivy Thompson, is that the people using the sites experienced a change in their beliefs, although she conceded in her own words that it may be linked to the disgrace of the community in control of the site, or even something more trivial. Number 1. Bison Bone Mystery in 2015, archaeologists in Alberta, Canada discovered a wealth of artifacts left behind by the poorly understood ancient Northern Plains culture of North America. The finds included the bone fragments of 65 or more bison, dating back to around 500 BC, who appear to have been butchered in a single event, and over 100 stone points crafted from a type of rock that is only found 620 miles away in North Dakota. The most peculiar artifacts were a series of eight bison bone arrangements found beneath the layer of scattered bones and tools. Archaeologists raced against the clock to excavate and document the site, located just north of the Montana border 
amid evidence of lootings. Everyone's always trying to steal these discoveries. It seems as though the ancient hunters ambushed the bison by herding them into marshy territory surrounded by dunes, giving them limited options for escape. Plus, the two different types of projectile points recovered from the site indicate that there were two different cultural influences in the area. They resembled the stone points of both the Basant phase, which are typically found further to the east, as well as the Sonota, who were based in what are now the Dakotas. The discovery of the artifacts is groundbreaking, showing that these groups lived in Alberta around 2,500 years ago and raise important questions about how and why these cultures migrated north and westward, as well as regarding their trading relationships. Additionally, the presence of bison stone sculptures has researchers wondering what they were for. They may have been ritual offerings, but they also may not have been. Their purpose for now remains a mystery. Thanks for watching! Which discovery would you want to see in real life? Which one do you want to learn more about? Let me know in the comments below and remember to subscribe if you haven't already. See you tomorrow.